morning, rock and rollers. I'm Sal Ramazzini. Hi, bull, 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 bullers. We are here in another galactic, saying you hi, ha, 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 hi. We are the Gitas, and you are listening to the Gitas podcast, episode number three. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Next to me is sitting the beautiful and always dramatic Nicole Lemberg, a.k.a. Michelle. Hi, Nicole. Hola, my Latino friend. Welcome, welcome, guys, to another podcast of the Gitas. I just want to let you know that today, later today, you're going to be able to watch that the video for That's All I Do. It's finally out. Woo! It's out today. Check it out. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel. You can find us at The Gitas on Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, Twitter, all the social media accounts. And if you want to check out on the description below, we have all the links to the podcast, videos of what we're talking about, for the segments for Conspiracy Sal and Sasha's Song for a Day, Playlist for a Lifetime. What can we say about the Femme Fatale video, Sasha? I think we can we can just tell that we're working on this video and we want to show it to you in the middle of December. Perfect. We are also coming up. And to you too. To you too. To Mr. Too. Sal Conspiracy Alicia. Thank you. I appreciate the news. I also want to tell you guys that the Remix, the remix album is going to come out in December as well. Be sure to check it out. You can also check out our album, Beverly Kills. It's out on iTunes. We have it also on Spotify. And you can also check it out on YouTube. All right, guys. The segment for today, we're going to be talking about tattoo stories and live show stories. We're going to be sharing with you guys our favorite stories about getting a tattoo or our favorite tattoo. And we're also going to be talking about any live show that we've been to, our favorite one. It could be any time. It could be been, been when you were six, when you were 20. So... With further ado, let's start talking about our tattoo stories. Nicole, you said you said you wanted to talk to us about your favorite tattoo. I don't recall saying that, but I will tell you. <laughs> so I don't have that many tattoos, and my story is going to suck because it doesn't really have that much meaning. But one of my favorite tattoos is on my pointer finger on the inside. It's like a little camera, so I could be cheesy and put my finger up to my eye and it looks like I'm taking a picture. And it's just cool because I take pictures. Who made that tattoo? Um, his name is Daniel Winter at Winter Stone on Instagram. And it was... Where did you get it? What studio? Did you go here in LA? Was it, it, was, here in LA? it was just a private like room. He was in an art store and in the back he had like this little room for tattoos, which sounds like super ghetto. Coming back to this uh, Hollywood rapes stories. So how it happened? Me, how it happened, Michelle? Ha ha ha! Comedian over here. No, it was cool. It sounds like super ghetto, but the appointment it doesn't sound ghetto at all. I mean, it just sounds. He was just like in the back room of an art studio. Now he has a real studio, but it took me three months to get the appointment. Yeah. Because originally I wanted to get a Hamsa tattooed on my back, like on the back of my neck. And the wait list was four months. So I was like, oh, while I wait, I'm going to get this camera tattooed. So I emailed this guy and he was like, it's going to be three and a half months. So it wasn't a lot quicker, but he did it in like 10, 15 minutes and then it faded in two months. And what did you do? Have to get another date with him? Wait three months? No, he said I can get it touched up whenever I want for free, but I never went because like it's such thin lines that it would just get ruined. Sorry, my story sucked. No, it doesn't <laughs> suck. It's actually pretty good. But I mean, I can see it's fading a little bit already, right? God. Well, it's a good that's tattoo, Nicole. Th that's why I think it's better not to wait for four months and just go uh, to your friend if you have one, like I do all the time, and have all my tattoos done. That's it. <laughs> my first tattoo, uh, like, so before... When I was uh, younger, I would be against tattoos. I would be like, oh, shit, I shouldn't tag myself. Like, why why I want to tag myself? 
is gonna stay forever if I change my mind on what I did. And uh, my first tattoo I made when I was 20, 20 maybe two or 23. Ukraine? In Ukraine. And the guy just released from prison. Actually, it was a sketchy the story. Tattoo master? Yeah. And I came to his house, and he would maybe make m- it. He would he would make me a uh, sw- It was Swas Fort, Swas Fort. So it's like it's a uh, uh, fort of swastika, swa, uh, the sun, and all good. So I made myself this yantra, and. I mean, it was crazy. It was crazy. And I thought, I'm going to like, okay, I'm going to make just only this one. And that's it. And I made it. And after probably two months, I decided, okay, I'm going to just make another one. Just the second one. Just to, just to match what I have. Just <laughs> another hand. That's it. My, I made this. And after, again, a couple months, it was like, um... I will make myself a small one or maybe even two to match it again. And I'm gonna in my idea was I'm gonna match everything. So I made it one more flowers on my shoulders. And then I decided, okay, I'm gonna do whatever I want. And I started to just kill myself with the tooth. Never ending. An addiction. Yeah. Yeah. Adrenaline rush. Okay, but I have a question. You said you were completely against tattoos. You didn't want to mark your body. So what changed? Why did you decide? I decided to mark my body. But why? why? I'll tell you why. Because uh, I really, uh, I really was, and I really is into Vedic culture. And for me, it's it it was the. It was a sign of. It was the sign of everything. So it's like if you wanted to translate swastika, it's all good. So for me, it was the lucky charm kind of. And uh, I decided that it's a good time to start actually mark myself and mark myself smartly, so I can keep it through all my life. And right now, I actually have no single tattoo that I would be like uh, I would get rid of it I mean yeah I'm getting rid of uh, tattoos I made in Ukraine uh, actually <laughs> that's the only thing it well he, did he fucked up his idea that's what? <laughs> no he can tell the story How I can tell you a story about so the I last decided two in the Ukraine. Yeah, li- last two, not last, but uh, the previous one. Uh, so I, Sal was making himself. Uh, Dima was making uh, Sal's uh, wolf tiger on his shoulder, and and I decided, okay, I'm gonna make myself uh, tattoo as well. So I found a primitive uh, one, the yantra of uh, Saturn. And I decided to put the yantra of Saturn uh, on my hand, and I I uploaded. <laughs> Stop! I downloaded I downloaded uh, Rahu yantra too, just to check it out how it looks like. And then when we just well, were about to start, I said like, okay, here's the shit. He like he said, okay, here's gonna be like this, like that. I said I want it like right here. We started to make it, we made it, we recorded even the video that we have on YouTube actually on our channel that you can subscribe to and ring the bell, right? So we, and we, yeah, we finished the tattoo and then I re- I started to, to watch it and thinking about like, okay, great, like, let's check it out. Is it, is it like the same lines there? And I realized that it is not Saturn Yantra, it's Rahu Yantra. I was like, oh shit. Okay, what should I do? And I said, okay, I'm gonna put Saturn Yantra just right next to Rahu Yantra. 
and I did it. And then I realized that these two yantras is too much for me. It's is too strong. Uh, in, it is like it's strong influence on life when it's together. And I decided just like to get rid of it. Why are you laughing, Nicole? It's you're dying. You're just like dragging this story up. Basically, you printed two designs. You got the wrong design. So then you got the right design. And now you're covering them. Now they're covering them. I'm yeah, I'm covering because it's like uh, it's, it's powerful. It's it's super powerful, and they can live together. Actually, these two yantras, and they just like making like me. They're getting divorced. Stressed. They got they got they got lawyers. They're getting divorced. Yeah, I, I I just have this beautiful rose coming in here. It's gonna be more in here because we 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 didn't finish this one in time. So yeah, this is my uh, part of the story of my life in tattoo world. Actually, we have <laughs> ninja stuff. You don't try. I I I would wanted to say something about uh, my favorite tattoo artist too. His name is uh, Slava Bodrov, and he lives in San Diego right now, and he works in the studio that I don't know how, uh, what's the name of the studio, and how to find out, actually just call him, but we're online right now, we're talking to you, because we can't, and we can't make it. So we're going to include Slava's Instagram on the description as well below. You can check it out below in the description. We're going to put it. You can find his Instagram there. Don't don't worry. We'll have the information for you. Great. So, what's your story, though? It's interesting you mentioned him because I was going to tell a story about Slava. My first tattoo, I got it actually at your house. Woo! Well, your old house. Your old house. Whoa. Yeah, on North Hollywood. Burbank. Well, it's North Hollywood or no? Burbank is it's, North Hollywood? It's Burbank. What is okay? An alcohol. Actually, the that's all I do. Video was uh, completely uh, filmed in Burbank, California, 2016. 2016. The future. <laughs> he came to your house with his with all his gear and his machine and everything. And okay. Slava. <laughs> And Nicole, stop! It was it was really amazing because I I just told him like the idea that I had I wanted to get a Ganesh in my body, and he didn't draw any stencil or had any sketch of it. He literally just like crossed, measured. made like two X, make two made two X's on my on my arm, kind of like measured around, and then he just started drawing, and it was a really cool process to see just to see somebody like drawing drawing your body i i really enjoyed it and 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 then it's probably one of my favorite tattoos in my body probably my favorite tattoo in my body just because of the experience you know like watching somebody draw from completely zero nothing and making an, a, an art piece it was yeah. it was yeah. really really amazing so i really encourage you guys to check him out um what about pain pain the the, I, I, the first one wasn't bad. I'm not going to lie. The first one, because I think on, 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 on this part of my body, on the forearm, is not as bad. Uh, I think the worst one was the rose that Scotty did on my chest. Uh -huh. That pain was intense. Dima also with you the know wolf why tiger. As well, it depends on the pressure that you... That you make on with your uh, how it's called with your tattoo machine, with your tattoo. Like how wet your hand is. Yeah. What do you think? It is sometimes it color is color also like I feel like when they when they get, get color, color yeah. it's it's painful. Color, white, color hurts especially white. White, white is a demon. White is a demon. White is a bitch. Yeah. But still, like I got, a, I got a, like a really painful one from Slava was the my raven dick, not my raven dick. I mean the raven on your dick. <laughs> no raven on my on my chest, underneath the heart, and it it touches the 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 rib cage and and 
It didn't hurt. I mean, it hurt. It hurt, but it wasn't as bad, for example, as the wolf or as bad as the rose. The rose was intense. Scotty told me, okay, Scotty is Scotty is actually... It's interesting. Scotty, uh, her name is Aleona. We, were, we had a band together called Exposers. We play hardcore punk kind of shit. And yeah, and she uh, and she's a tattoo uh, uh, master as well from Ukraine. And Living she, in Barcelona. And she l- yeah, she lives in ba- Barcelona, and she's amazing in all sense of this war- word. She came to the show we had in Docker Pub. Yeah, yeah. And that's the first time that I met her, and and she was really cool. She was like, I r- I really want to give you a tattoo. Just come over to the shop where I'm working. I came, she delivered, it was painful, it was artistic as well, it hurt like a motherfucker, I tried to be a man, I tried not to cry, she told me to, to stand up and I almost fainted, it was an experience, I'll tell you that. Great. Uh, I had a story with her, so we uh, supposed to have, uh, s- uh, supposed to have the rehearsal, and we came to rehearsal spot, and the spot was burned down. Like almost completely, it was like all black like everything, and we're like, great. What happened? And the guy, the owner, said like, okay, it's something happened uh, overnight, and uh, the half of uh, gear is fucked up, and it's kind of like this by. So well, like just no rehearsal, no like rehearsal room. No rehearsal room. Where like, okay, what we're we gonna do right now? Um, and she said like, okay, I live here, just like block from here. Uh, if you want, I can make you a tattoo. I said like, okay, let's fucking do it. So we would go to her uh, apartment, and she said like, what? So what? What do you want to do? I said like, uh, I don't know. She's like, any ideas? I was like, let's do a heart. Let's do a small heart. It's like where? It's like, uh, let's do it here. Like, and I have it right here on. Or where? How to? On, on my stomach? <laughs> no. <laughs> on the guns. On the guns, yeah. <laughs> on the on the guns, gun area. So yeah. D- d- Chicks that make tattoos are hot. They give you pain and beauty. <laughs> yeah. It's great. Yeah. So guys, we're gonna continue talking about tattoos later on maybe a little bit or maybe not but i want to encourage you guys to please comment let us know more stories about your tattoos we want to know what is your favorite tattoo we want to know what is the story behind your tattoo did it hurt what was your most painful tattoo or maybe it didn't hurt at all we want to know please let us just write comment and we're going to continue talking now about a little bit of conspiracy sal sal All right, guys, this week's conspiracy, we are living in a virtual reality. That's right. You heard me. We are living in a virtual reality, guys. Just like the Matrix from the Wachowski Brothers. You can be a space cowboy if you want, but you're still living in a virtual reality, brother. I know. Like everybody, it's it's illusion we're living in. What, what, Nicole? She said, okay, Jim Carrey. Whatever Jim Carrey or uh, Dalai Lama or how his name is or whatever leader you believe is saying is good for you. Listen, the idea of, of us living in a virtual reality was basically brought up by a British philosopher in 2003. Oh, well, I hear the notes from the future. Yeah, this basically this philosopher from 2003, his name's Bronson, if I'm not mistaken. He talked about us living in a virtual reality, that a that a that a future civilization, that a futuristic civilization, made a virtual reality of their ancestors, and that's us, and that we're living in this virtual reality. That was basically the idea. I mean, over the time. Scientists like Neil deGrasse Tyson talk about us that the probability of like phys- of physics of mathematics 
says that it can be a possibility a 50 50 percent chance that we are living literally in a video game uh somebody with a lot of influence like elon musk ceo of tesla and space x also believes there's a chance that we might be living in a virtual reality the strongest argument for us being in the simulation is the following 40 years ago we had pong do you remember, remember that game no. punk it was two rectangles and a ball Oh, but you know this, but you've seen this game. You've seen this game called Pong, where it's like two rectangles and a ball in the middle, and you have to like hit it. All right. That was, that was like 40 years ago. Now we're at four, the game is 40 years from from that time now. Like we're playing Grand Theft Auto, we're playing Mario, Zelda, we're playing virtual reality games. That you know what? I, imagine in 20 more years. Imagine in, in 50 more years. So like, they're gonna, there's gonna reach a point where we're gonna be able to distinguish between reality and virtual reality since things are gonna be so real. Like, you somebody did you guys try already the the? Yeah, I've tried it once. What's time. the name of that thing? Oculus. Like VR goggles. VR goggles, VR goggle, yeah. It's like virtual, virtual reality goggles, basically. I saw, I saw people freaking out on the roller coaster one. I didn't freak out on the roller coaster, but I freaked out when I was uh, in the room and people were coming from all over and was trying to sh like shot me. And I was just kind of like defense myself. So I would turn and, and I was killing like killing some people <laughs> on on the <laughs> on the side. So <laughs> I turned, I turned and saw like two fucking people running over like over me with guns. And I was like freaked out, and I fell down on the on the floor. It's crazy, but think about it. Right now, we have. I mean, you we you have already networks on, the, on Facebook. It's yeah, you you already reality live in a virtual well. reality like Facebook for for sure. YouTube too. What else? Uh, what? Uh, I want to be on the other side of this, going against your conspiracy. So, on the same website you just read that from, it says that. A stimulation, by definition, is a quote-unquote imitation of a situation or process. So if we're living in a simulation, Can then how could we interact with our physical world? Can you rap it? Um, if you give me a beat. <laughs> Unless our physical internet <laughs> can. No. no, this is serious. This is conspiracy. Okay, tell me, tell me, tell me. So if... Our physical interactions with food, humans, and air are all like quote unquote elaborate programs to trick the brain. Um, then the concept is like flawed because it's supposed to be an imitation of a situation. That's what a simulation is. So we can't be living in virtual reality if we're talking to other people, interacting with our environment, and all this stuff. Why? It says once a simulated object becomes physical, then does it conceptually stop being a simulation? Because we're experiencing it. No, because it's imagine. Let me let me say something. It's not we are real, and if I cut you with knife, we'll see blood, right? But it's we'll live an illusion because we are kind of like we're entities that gonna live forever. That's what I believe. That's why it is illusion. So, and right now we have a lot of masks, and we live in this imagined world. I'm. My name is Sasha. I'm uh, the musician. I have a band, the Gitas, whatever. But I think the illusion is to be like this. It's nothing about like we live in the matrix. Uh, but if you go deeper, we live in the matrix because it's all actually matrix and all the systems and everything works like numbers. Well, listen, before, before I want to tell what I believe. In a video game, there's parameters, right? For example, if a bullet hits a character, the character will bleed, the character will die, a character can have uh, stamina, a character can have character stamina, can have characteristics to jump, have characteristics. To, so it can be the same. The same rules can apply to this to this simulation that that we're living in. You have you have. Uh, energy you have to sleep you have to eat food you recharge your energy you know what i mean like you, there's there's like patterns already like stimulated on us or like there's laws that control us like laws that control a game 
laws that control us, like a supercomputer that's that is controlling us. That's basically the the belief, you know. You the only thing that exists is the thing that is being perceived as the same thing in a virtual reality. For example, when you're when you're a character, when you're a main character, you can only see what you're perceiving. So for example, what's behind me right now doesn't exist. What only exists is what I perceive. So it's it I mean it's it's interesting. It's really it's really interesting. I mean it, and it kind of ties what what were your what were you saying Sasha with the Vedic knowledge of us living in an illusion. It's kind of it like kind of ties in the same sense of like maybe we're in this like illusion, yeah. We're maybe just a shadow of something moving in another dimension, you know? I mean, the, the the main the main question was illusion like who you are so i think everybody should ask themselves who they are this is going to be the really interesting start for like figuring it out what's going on actually if you know who you are if you know where you go you're not going to fight for something that doesn't doesn't worth it you know just think about like Th the, the thing that they're talking here in this article is like imagine a civilization that became super advanced and they and they created a virtual reality where they can put their minds and like continue to live and this is the virtual reality you know this is the simulation it's already happening it was porn industry so the, a lot of uh, a lot of actors and a lot of uh, hustlers from porn industry they move to virtual reality because like people are gonna use it they have dolls they have this just put glasses and just like have a fucking orgy it's like inception we're gonna we're, we're gonna create a virtual reality so we're gonna be living in a virtual reality instead of a virtual reality instead of a virtual reality or augmented reality what's the difference you know I don't know I'm asking you what is the difference between augmented well, reality know. look it up. it up yeah okay augmented reality get is close to the microphone augmented reality is a live, direct, or indirect view of, phys of a physical real world. So I guess like Pokemon Go would be an example. Like you interact with your real world and you're like, and you see these characters, you know, like Pokemons uh -huh. and you catch them. So I guess that's like augmented. So it, it interacts with your real life versus virtual reality where you're like placed in a certain yeah. scene like a roller coaster. So augmented reality can be, for example, like the Google glasses. Th th they show you where to move. They can show you where to go, it, but you're seeing the the real world. It's just augmenting the reality. Isn't That's it, interesting. Isn't it real that I've heard that Google Glasses can scan you and and say you're a student and you have this kind of uh, uh, amount of like uh, of of money? You making uh, a certain amount of money a month? They can get your phone or address or whatever. Really? I mean, I'm asking. I don't know. I have no idea. I it's haven't even... Because it's interesting. If you can scan the person a little bit and even scan the, the, what I think, scan that the person has an iPhone or whatever, the smartphone, and you can scan the person and see the Facebook profile or whatever, and these glasses can be like, shh, 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 name. Look, the guy leaves there, the phone number or whatever. Could it be possible? Or it's already possible. It can be possible. I think this would be a good subject to talk as a main subject for our next podcast because, like, even the I the new iPhone, they have facial recognition. So, like, they're forcing you. They're forcing you to go into virtual reality. Or no, or it could be a means of the government, like tracking everybody in every which way. Because you know, have you heard about them like putting a chip in you to like scan and buy stuff? Definitely, yeah. So this is this could be a good. Topic. It's the beginning, yeah, yeah. I mean, they checking you out already everywhere. I just wanted to say something. when you put your information, your bank information, your whatever on Facebook or uh, any other Instagram or something, Twitter, you put your information and in every like the government knows everything. They can track your IP address and they can do whatever. Even right now, we're talking right now, and a couple series already <laughs> listening to us. I mean, your, your phone and everything, for sure. Everybody's listening. The whole world is listening. Walls have ears. I also wanted to tell you, um, in a system, in a computer, 
if the system is not broken, you can always reboot a program, right? Yep. That is also the conception of, of reincarnation. It's mm -hmm. the reboot of a program. Or go into another level. Okay, so that's that's the interesting part where it comes, right? Maybe it's a simulation within levels. Okay. Like you're talking... So my question... Games glitch, right? They pause. Yes. Why haven't we, like, paused? Or can you explain that? Okay. I can explain. Wait, can I? I can explain. When you're depressed, you pause. When you're depressed, you fucking glitch. That's why a lot of people are kind of glitch around us in this reality. Even in the virtual reality, like, people glitch because they can't enjoy being God because they can make it. That's w that would be considered one character in the game. One character isn't, doesn't glitch. I mean, like a game as a whole, like it could like freeze. But we're so talking about we freeze we're talking whole? about a supercomputer in the future that can can generate this simulation. So okay, I can tell so you. So they're just super advanced. I can tell you what a glitch can be. Okay. The Second World War can be a glitch. Donald Trump being becoming president can be a glitch. The Oscars. The, uh, La La Land winning the the Oscar when it was supposed to be. Moonlight can be a glitch. The pr the I doubt an Oscar can equivalent. Equivalent is that a word? I just made it up. To a glitch that could be seen around the world. I don't know. I don't believe it. Do you believe it? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do because illusion is is real. You know, it it sounds cheesy, but illusion is real. Whatever you think about it, you live in illusion. You live in the small black boxes in which is in your head and yeah and day by day if you're trying to find an information about yourself about the world and about everything and like compare and analyze it and this this thing moves you forward but if you just spend your time watching tv eating junk food and like doing bullshit doing cloud rev with the words like uh, I'm gonna fuck my girl I'm gonna drink more Hennessy kind of shit everything that I've heard until now of our, our existence and everything this is one of the, the things that I believe that is very 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 real and resonates with me that we're living in this like simulation and there's there might be like either levels or but there's something about this this reality that is not real. What I think sure. about about uh, about saints or uh, monks, let's say the person sits in meditation and sees s like different worlds, like at all. The person the person physically is here, but the soul or whatever you wanna yeah the energy or name it yeah. the it's not like this this. Entity is not there. The person can see the dimension, let's say, or something like this, or can fly to whatever. Yeah. Because you can dream, uh, you can dream whatever you want. I think the time tr travels and all these like mystic uh, abilities comes from this, from meditation, from from working with your mind as well. People can heal themselves with just positive thinking or I know the story the guy built the army in his head and he would uh, he would like start the war with his cancer the brain cancer and he won in four months he killed the army of cancer with his brain army of with his consciousness yes, basically yes so you can build whatever with your consciousness. So your consciousness, as for me, is the marker of uh, of amount of illusion that you're living in. Well, guys, let us know what you that think. Was deep. Yeah, it was deep. Let us know what you think, guys. Please comment. Let us know what you think about this conspiracy. Are we or not living in a virtual reality? Are we or are we not living in a virtual reality? Let us know what you think. Comment, please. And also, if you guys want to check out more info, remember in the description there's a video and there's more information regarding this conspiracy theory. So, guys, let's talk about now something new that we have in, in our show. And 
this is uh, the segment from our friend Michelle, and it's called the yoga class with Michelle. Is it called yoga? Is it hot yoga minute? Hot yoga, hot, hot yoga. Hot yoga minute with Nicole. In the time of ADD, ADHD, anything that ends with double Ds, there's hardly any time to relax, but you can take these 40 seconds to just fix your week with some meditation, yoga, great vibes. Um, just exhale. You, you maybe inhale first. That would be helpful. Take a deep breath in, close your eyes. Just imagine yourself sitting on the beach. There's seagulls flying around. They've probably ate all the food you left while your eyes were closed. As you exhale, release all your stress. Release all the tensions. Release all the carbs you ate earlier today. Just think about all the hate you have towards your enemies. Just let it go. You don't need it. Put it out into the world and get rid of it. And then come back to it when the meditation is over because people need to get what they deserve. And it's not in karma's hands, it's in your hands. Hold on, I'm just meditating so hard I need to take my jacket off. Give me one moment, please. You know, out of any activity in the world that I could do, Yoga is not even on the list of things I would ever want to do. Yet here we are, 40 seconds a week, yoga-ing, which is now a verb that I've created. You can just lie on your back, close your eyes, and do the shavasana or shavasana. It's my favorite yoga pose because it's literally just sleeping just 40 seconds a week of you just sleeping is just like just enough to just energize you for the week ahead and considering we're doing this on Monday you're gonna be so ready with just 40 seconds of yoga-ing and 40 seconds of sleep <sighs> it's important to remember that carbs are bad gluten is the devil just don't eat even water has been proven recently to be really bad Sal, Sal is looking at me like what are you talking about he can't even hear me but he knows I'm speaking nonsense but I have nothing to say because I hate yoga so with that you're going to exhale on the first breath you took like 40 minutes ago and should you still be alive uh, I think that concludes the first week of yoga great job everybody um, for next week we'll focus on just I need help mentally physically goodbye everybody <laughs> alright guys welcome back to the Gita's podcast episode number 3 now let's talk about live shows what has been your favorite live show that you've been to? Can you just share a story? I would say I don't really like to go see live shows, first of all. Because if it, it it's if it's local show, let's say eighteen percent of what what you can hear and see is kinda not that good. Or if it's a big show, um I'm getting bored because it's too crowded or it's like whatever. But I have a lot of shows that I remember and I think I'm going to remember all my life. Uh, the recent one, I would say the last one was an amazing one. It was uh, Bobby Caldwell. Bobby Caldwell, he is a American singer. It, and it's interesting fact uh, in his history that I didn't know that I just found out that he met uh, Bob Marley when he was a kid. 
he lived in Miami and his mother was a realtor and she sold uh, something uh, to Bob Marley and that's how they met and they became friends and Bob Marley showed him a lot of music and teach him a lot of uh, skills or whatever uh, and it's interesting I never knew it and then he moved he moved to LA he lives in LA right now but it was really a rare show in LA uh, in I found it I was I was looking for sh some kind of shows like to go somewhere and I couldn't find anything so I decided okay I'm just gonna throw a couple names on Google and so okay let's just try Bobby Caldwell boom is playing in the lane this I don't I don't remember the name of the play of the place always so that sorry so it was just the standards it was his own songs and man unbelievable show unbelievable show beautiful musicians mm. It, it was super sweet and it was two hours of uh, super sweet music his hit uh, what you won't do for love is one of the main songs of uh, of the of the charts of world best hits so yeah it was a great show nice Nicole am I next no, I just said your name because oh, I just wanted just, to say you just your like name. Saying it? Yeah, yes, it's catchy. I know. So I have Sasha's microphone because I don't want to give him the opportunity to say anything rude about the band I'm gonna talk about. Well, you're, you're getting it. No, don't give him the mic. It's it's uh, it's gay. That's offensive to gay people. Okay, it's not gay, it's but it's shitty. <laughs> I think he's just jealous, but. When I heard we were going to talk about this, I couldn't think of any show to talk about. And I've been to like hundreds of shows because I take pictures at concerts. And the only show that keeps coming to mind is AFI. And I saw them in 2009. It was their album release show. I was like 13 years old. And What album? Uh, Crash Love, their like least known album. Crash Love? Yeah, it's like nobody has ever heard of it. And even Davey says, like, it's like an album that never existed. That was when? 2009, it came out. That was before they became, like, famous? No, they. it was right after December Underground. That came out in 2006 or seven. Wait, December Underground came in when? This 2006? 2006, yeah. So then three years later was, like, Crash Love. And then three years later was um, Burials, I think. And then they just released a new album this year. It's self-titled. I know a lot about this band. So I want to talk about them because it's not the show that was like the most interesting part. It's kind of like getting to the show that okay. I thought was interesting because I go to a lot of shows, like I said, and the only way you can get into the show was to win tickets. You had to call your radio station and be the 20th caller. So like weeks leading up to the show, like my mom would take me to school. I was in middle school and I would call. I'd never get through. I never like won tickets. And I was like, Mom, Mom, I really want to go to this show. Like, please, like, can we buy, buy tickets? Like, and there's no tickets anywhere. Sold out completely. It, it's not sold out. You can't buy tickets. You have to be lucky. You know what I mean? And she had these, like, beads hanging on that mirror in her car. What is it called? The, what is it? Like a... Beads? The mirror that's on your car that you look through when you're driving. Yeah. Whatever that is. So she had these, like... Rare view, rare view mirror. Rare view. Yeah, that. Sorry. I don't drive. Sorry, I don't speak English. You're yeah, from I here. don't speak English. I'm not from here. So she had these like crystals that were hanging, and she's like, "Oh, these are like lucky crystals. You can touch them and like put energy, and you'll get what you want." So I was, I'd always touch them on the way to school. I'd be like, "I really want to go to this AFI concert, whatever." So the day comes of the show, and I'm like, "All like whatever." I didn't get tickets, and we're driving to school, and she's like, "I'm gonna pick you up early today because we're gonna go to the concert." I'm like, "What? What do you mean we're gonna go to the concert?" So it turns out she called her friend Gary who knows the owner of the Roxy and he put us on like the house list. So she like picked me up at lunch. I was telling all my friends about it. Nobody cared. <laughs> and we like <laughs> drive to the venue and like super hyped. And then we get there and there's like the biggest line going down the Sunset Strip. 
and this was like a big deal show because like it holds 500 people it's super intimate and they so it was first come first serve and yeah then because there's like, close yeah and i would just like all my dreams were like crushed quickly crushed so i'm like sad again it's almost as if we didn't go to the show so we go to the door and we're like we're on like the list and he's like what list we're like i don't know the roxy list and he's like oh just stand right here and he like puts us right in front of the door and all the fans are like behind us so we're like the two people just standing in front of the door with security so as soon as doors open we go in first there's no barricade and like we're on stage so that was that was just my favorite show because like you were on stage no we were like our bodies were like touching the stage oh. there's no barricade and i was 13 i was like super excited i held davy's hand and then they came out and then they, they killed it that's when yeah he, he, almost, he, that was the time when he could sing oh don't the go hard there parts. i thought i liked you as a friend you but come on we saw them together at what was the name of the event we went uh when we were young when we were young fest I mean, listen, they're they're a good band live, but you just can't admit that the dude can't hit the notes when he was in 2000, what, three? I want to see you doing your jumps in 10 years, mister. Okay. Challenge accepted. Sasha hates this story. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Sasha's been asleep for 25 minutes. I just want to ask you, you know all these cool guys. Uh, why we're not popular still? What cool guys? Like Gary... The manager, the owner, the whatever you. I keep all the cool people for names. myself. I just name drop. That's what I'm talking to about. To make or myself it's seem like it, Or we playing shitty music, or just holding back us from all these people. My goal is to just sabotage your music career. Sasha, you've been hanging out too much with Fred Flintstone. <laughs> yeah, I want to hear Sal's story because. Um, just because. I want to hear your story, Sal. Freddy, Freddy, Tell Freddy, me. Freddy, Freddy, Loopy. I I can understand what you're talking about. Okay, here goes my story. Freddy Flintstone. Freddy. <laughs> Nicole, who's Freddy Flintstone? I know who's Freddy Flintstone, but I I wouldn't hang with him. He is an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Fred. He needs to go to AA. My favorite show... Thank you, Sal. ...was... Robert Plant at the Palladium. That's a small venue for him. Is that not a small venue for him? I mean, he was playing with the Space Shifters, not with Led Zeppelin. So, but I really enjoyed that show. Number one, like like you were talking about, like getting to the show. I literally walked from my apartment to the Palladium, and I was walking all on my way all the way, thinking like. I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna get to see Robert Plant. I've been a huge Led Zeppelin fan forever. This is the the only chance I get to either hear this live. You know, it's, I don't know. It was very emotional. Uh, yeah, so I was crying right now. Also, I feel like a great show. A great show. A great night has a lot of elements. Definitely, the story of how you get to the venue, the people you're with. At the venue, you know, who you go with to the concert has adds a lot. And the show itself. So getting to the concert was a thing. Um, like always I had a little drama. One of I was I was uh walking I was going to this concert with my girlfriend at the time and my two good friends also came to that concert with my ex girlfriend. So it was, you know, it was like a little bit of drama. It was a little uncomfortable, but fuck it. We went inside and we both, me and my girlfriend at the time, we both walked to the front. We were like storming through people, elbowing people, like, excuse me. Like, there were people that were standing. Come on, you're, 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 you're a fan. Can you imagine a fan that was standing in the Palladium for like two hours waiting for, for Robert Plant to come out? And here comes Sal pushing you like, hey. Move, coming through, and they're like, "Been here two hours, asshole." Thing is, I got really. The thing is, I got really close. Rubber Plant came out. It was unbelievable. Stairway to Heaven, the music. He's such an artist, even though he's not the youngster that he once was. His voice and everything the show was well adapted, and there was a moment where everybody had their phones out, and. And I didn't have my phone out. And he looked at us. 
and he like looked at us and he was like like you guys are living the moment and boy it was amazing yeah it was amazing it was just amazing because robert plant saw the same thing that me and my girlfriend at the time saw the whole crowd you know with phones out and there's just two people in the middle with no phones and he like saw the moment he was like that's it live the moment that for me was magical you know but you you know this is a uh, link to the your uh, conspiracy cell story from today as well because we're living in the virtual virtual reality we can't just uh, catch the moment we need to document it and then show it to friends share get <laughs> likes get paid yeah get likes get paid yeah, so like us crazy. everywhere you can especially on youtube right now and we moving to an amazing show which you were waiting for this segment. long segment but it's a show man it's, it's a show. show it's not like that conspiracy cell bullshit that we have in here and this is called how Sasha's massages. <laughs> it's so amazing you forgot, <laughs> right? I uh, don't forget. Uh, okay, this is the song for a day, the playlist for a lifetime. So yeah. What are we doing in this song for a day playlist for life? That's my iPhone <laughs> actually. <laughs> so you know what? I found the new word for me. Uh, before it was the word like, now it is word so. What are we doing here with this uh, segment of the show? Every week I have the song for every day for you. And you can listen it listen to it like a whole part, uh, a whole like an EP I would say, compilation or you can collect every day and have a huge uh, beautiful playlist for a lifetime or just a song a day. So let's start. We're talking about Bobby Caldwell um, earlier. So I would love to start Monday with Bobby Caldwell, What You Won't Do For Love. This is the classic, and if you never heard of this one, you should check it out. Um, moving to Tuesday, we're going to have a young man called Vic Manza with the song Oh My Goodness. This is our, uh, I would say, uh, the camp song, right? We would, oh my goodness, yeah. We would, we would just repeat this, this shit like another shit, which is Foo Fighters, the best. Uh, you should check it out as well. The best, the best, the best, and forever. So Vic Manza, oh my goodness, it's a. Uh, it's an amazing hip hop product, and I think Vic Mansa is going to be a big thing in a little bit. We're moving to Wednesday, and Wednesday. What's happening on Wednesday? I just no. He lost the day. No, it's it's the day. So we're moving to Wednesday, and for Wednesday. We have Sid with the song No. The Sid is the part of another band called Internet, and it's her, uh, it's her solo project. And Odd Future helping her. Um, you should check it out. The record by itself is really good. The last one she released, and this song is my favorite. Sid No. Next one is Thursday, and on Thursday we want something a little bit rock and roll, and it's gonna be Kings of Leon, Reverend. Nice, right? Is the radio hit? Nice, and it's a pop rock song. I I think this band is the main band f for right now for me as a pop act, being a rock band. It's not a hard rock, whatever. It's mellow and it's beautiful, but it's cool. It's stylish. I like this band. Check this. Check this song. It's not a new record from them. It's the last year, right? 
but still, it's their newer. It's their newer record. It's from Walls. It's the last one, but yeah. it's not not this year. That's this year was. It's a great record, actually. It's it's my favorite Kings of Leon record. It's a great, great record. I, I really like it a lot. I really recommend people to check it out. All right. Here we go. The Friday is the chill day. And on Friday, we want something dancey, uh, at least for this week. And it's going to be Chemical Brothers with the song Go. It's really uplifting uh, material. It's it you you should know this band. If you don't know this band, you're Nicole. So yeah, Chemical Brothers and newer song Go. And Saturday. Saturday uh, the weird day of for this week. It's the weird day of European music. And we can have I uh, the guys from Iceland. Uh, the name of the band is Dicta and the song is Breaking the Waves. It's a really good uh, romantic indie song, I would say. Uh, you should check it out. The guys from Iceland. Dicta. Breaking the Waves. And the last day is the God Day. Day of the Lord. Day. The Day of the Lord. And we're going to have um, a beautiful song from the band called The Beatles from England and the song's gonna be Within You Without You written by George Harrison with his friends from the band bye guys well guys I want to encourage you to please check our social media links you can find us at the Gitas iTunes Spotify Instagram and YouTube make sure to check also our new record Beverly Kills You can find it on iTunes and on Spotify. All, also, our singles are out on YouTube, our music videos. Make sure to check them out as well. So we're going to be also talking about... Oh, sorry, Nicole. What did you say? SoundCloud? SoundCloud. We're also, yeah, we're also on SoundCloud <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> this is SoundCloud. This is SoundCloud. You can yeah, also we, have, we also have some SoundCloud on Twitter and Bandcamp and maybe something else. Just check the app you're using and maybe you were there or all social media links are going to be on the please. description below so or make sure to check media, them out please check them out this week we're going to be talking about that's all i do the video is is going to be out today like in a couple hours actually and uh uh it we're really happy that we can show you this video already because it's been a long long time for us We 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 hold this moment for more than a year, and please comment, like and share, or don't like whatever. But you you just like be involved and let's let's check it out. We've worked a lot on this piece, so yeah, that's all I do. And don't don't forget to then unsubscribe from us. That was Nicole is. Uh, asking me to say unsubscribe and kill yourself so Sasha going to that's all I do I remember that song came uh what was one of the, that was one of the last ones that we that we actually did for the record and we also had uh strings recorded for this song at the record yeah they were uh, an arrangement made by Mr. uh Jared Jared Bischoff, Bischoff. yeah Jared Bischoff he is uh How did the name of the band Xia Xia or I J I Xiu Xiu, whatever, and he is he's a really good friend of Amanda Palmer, and uh, our friend uh, Jaron Lux as well, and it it the work he made, you can hear in that's all he do, and I think it's beautiful. We were present there, so we know for sure. Uh, we have a couple of videos on Instagram, I guess, uh, that captured that moment of that of the strings. Playing. Yeah, with, the recording yeah, of the strings. Yeah, with three amazing girls were playing all these beautiful strings for us and for you. Talk to us a little bit more about the lyrics, Sasha. This song is basically uh, about groupies, I would say. Groupies, uh, this bunch of girls that 
always backstage or around the stage around your tour bus and following you in a good way or in a bad way happens differently but a lot of the times there's uh, girls uh, falling falls in love fall in love with you falls in love with you right and uh, he says he says right looks at me right I'm like what what like what right you bastard <laughs> <laughs> what I was saying so they follow you they fall in yeah, love with so you yeah, they would turn the tour bus the, yeah. doing crazy shit for you yeah and sometimes they would oh I stuck here okay Just in me s- too in s- <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they want to stay with you forever and do whatever you ask them to do right or even be down to do something that you don't even ask them to do but and then they have these dreams and uh imaginary conceptions that you're going to stay with them forever or something like this but uh, the rock star is not for one place or for having a family on the road you know so this this is the song just saying this stories or the story that the rock musicians doesn't give a shit about anybody on the road uh, when we're talking about groupies he has a family or he has his life going on and even if he hands with you or he probably uh, it's not forever just for a little bit he, he would have a hot night with you or he would talk uh sweet uh words and whisper uh to you but he doesn't give a shit he doesn't care he just want to have fun right now in the moment which is pretty Buddhist. It's pretty Buddhist. <laughs> Enjoy <laughs> the moment. <laughs> yeah. Be a Buddhist. But I mean, I mean, yeah, this is the song about basically this. Don't fall for something that not gonna stay that's not gonna stay with you, not gonna make you anything but just uh pleasure or lust. You know it's this song we've only actually played it live twice. First time we played it was the acoustic show we had at Closer in Ukraine in Kiev. Yeah, that show was really magical. Thank you guys to, to everybody who came to that show and and witnessed that moment. That was the first time we played. That's all I do live. We had Sirosha playing um, sitar. sitar we had harmonium. Alex playing what in that particular song. Oh, okay. And then we had Alex playing percussion and and drum machine. Yeah. It was it was magical. It was really really magical. I was playing synth and bass, and you were playing your acoustic guitar and singing. It was a- actually the first acoustic show uh, of the Gitas, and I would say it was the last uh, acoustic show of the Gitas too. M- maybe not the last, but definitely I mean the, the last f- by now. The f- definitely the first one for many to come. But and then the second time we played this song was actually the last show, the welcome show. Yeah. That was the day we screened the video, so the people who came to the welcome show got to see the video for the first time before anybody. And then at the end of the show, we played the song. It was the second time we played it. It was the first time we played it electric, full electric instruments, only the three of us. Yeah. Um, and also, it was a really good a good performance. I think people really enjoyed it. So, which brings me to the last segment of the podcast which is to now play the song for you guys this is that's all i do make sure guys to check our social media links and check out the description of this video we are the gitas check out the new music video that's all i do is coming up in a couple of hours and have a beautiful day rock and rollers don't forget to comment and like and share and be present in the moment like those guys That's all I do Cheating on your blue eyes That's all I do
That's all I do So blame it on yourself Cause I'm leaving this town Who said that I love you? Who said that I care? I came just to calm down Your scariest nightmare Who said that I'm a sweetheart And will be over That's all I do Moving like a comet That's all I do Shining like a That's all I do So blame it on yourself Cause I'm leaving this town Who said that I love you? Who said that I care? I keep just to calm down Your scariest nightmare Who said that I'm a sweetheart And will be around Who said that I'm a sweetheart and we'll be around?